Hello everybody, we're looking at a uh, last round game from the Baku Chess Olympiad 2016. And we're looking at uh, the game between uh, Grandmaster Fab Fabiano Caruana with the white pieces versus the strong veteran Russian GM uh, Evgeny Barev with the black pieces, who is a noted... Um, French defense specialist and Carol Khan specialist. I think early in his career he leaned more toward the uh, French defense, but now he plays Carol Khan. Of course, there's similar systems. So let's get started. The game started off with e4, e5. Excuse me, not e4, e5. Because I just said Carol Khan. <laughs> but instead, e4, c6. d4. d5, there's your Carol Khan, which is a, a cousin to the Slav defense, of course. And just for you newbies, let me just show you that real quick. This would be the Slav defense. Notice the similar similarities in the pawn structure, except the e4 pawn is not advanced. Okay, so back to the game. So it makes sense that if you are learning the Slav, or play the Slav, you should also play the Karol Khan. It's nice to um, try to limit your repertoire if you can, and play similar pawn structures. So, Caruana played e5, which is known as the advanced variation, advanced variation of the Carol Khan. And one thing about um, this game that's interesting, I'm sure uh, Fabiano had a chance to prepare for Barayev, because um, one of the downsides of uh, being a known specialist in the opening is that your opponents can't prepare for you. So... Caruana probably just prepared. He knew he was going to either play French or Carol Khan. So, you know, he can, uh, you know, get to work on that. So, after E4, C6, D4, D5, there's the advanced variation. And it's, it seems like White is losing the tempo, which, which he does at the beginning. But he always gets it back due to the cramped nature of Black's position. And Black usually has to move... Uh, same piece a few times to get it properly developed. As you can see, the difference between this opening and say the advanced French is that this bishop can come out freely. Whereas in the advanced French you have a similar structure with this blockade in the center but this bishop is inhibited. However, the upside is that the counterplay against the d4 square has begun in earnest. Whereas in the Karakhan, the bishop comes out, but there's no pressure on the d4 square. So it's kind of like a trade off. And we could say at the same time that there's a slight weakness that's left behind as this pawn is not protected. And furthermore, it might not be totally clear that this bishop belongs here on f5. Uh, it is really early to be determining uh, one strategy and the bishop sometimes finds itself misplaced or just unceremoniously traded off early in the game and um, so these are factors that black has to, to weigh when playing this way. There is a line also with the immediate uh, c5 here. That's for another discussion. So bishop f5 was played, knight f3, and there's many ways to play this aggressive g4, we played h4, even knight c3, there's many, many ways to go about this. In the early days of this variation, on, on Alakine and uh, Rubenstein days in the early 1900s, 1920s and 30s, uh, grandmasters were immediately trading this bishop off with uh, d3. So bishop f5, knight f3, e6, 
Bishop E2. This is sometimes called the short variation, named after Grandmaster Nigel Short, who uh, put some time into developing the system and had some notable success with it. Bishop E2, Knight D7, castles, and white is just developing a solid position, getting developed. And banking on this to be a, a cramping influence uh, leading to a material gain later on. And Black, in his, for his part, in Carol, these uh, Carol Slav structures, is he has to organize his break C5 to put pressure on his pawn to generate uh, counterplay. Usually in the Carol Slav su structures, you want to achieve the break C5 or E5. Of course, e5 break is impossible because this pawn is here on e5 already. So he has to achieve the c5 break and try to break this uh, center down, which is a huge advantage for white if it uh, becomes stabilized. So either c5 or f6 breaks are possible here. All right, castle, bishop g6, and usually this knight will come out to e7 and then hop into uh, f5. Sometimes if given time, black will play h6 and then put the bishop there. But he decided to move the bishop first. h4, Caruana is not playing games. He just decides to um, take space on the queen side. Knight e7. And just looking at the position briefly, notice that black has no weakness in the position structurally. If you want to say he has a weakness, it's just that his position is cramped. So he would like to trade off some pieces. And this is one of the reasons why white plays in this manner, that he avoids uh, trading pieces early and due to the fact that black is, is so cramped in the position. A5, just gaining more space. Because although black has no structural weaknesses, he's not doing anything to um, attack white center. So therefore, white is just taking liberties and expanding on the queen side. Now it's difficult here because after a6, now we have some weaknesses appearing on the b6 square, which is very important. Again, this pawn is vulnerable, b7. This square is also vulnerable, c5 and d6 square. So we see that uh, just from that one pawn move, we see some potential weaknesses um, creeping up in the black position. Although its pawn structure is fine, there's some weak squares uh, cropping up. And let's see what Caruana does. b4, again, clamping down on the dark squares. So now, this break that I said was so vital in these Carol Slav structures is now impossible. So now, Black's only opportunity to break is F6. But then, you gotta worry about the E file becoming open. So it seems that uh, this, this is, looks like a very uncomfortable situation for Black. But being a specialist in this defense, uh, Barayev has probably been in this type of position before and probably plans to unravel uh, somehow, probably with knight f5, bishop e7, etc. Play f6, trying to uh, tear down uh, this pawn, pawn structure. So there it is, knight f5, and there's some nominal influence here. Usually, again, in the French, you would have your queen here on b6. This pawn would be on c5. This knight would be on c6, and all pressure on the d4 pawn. So, I have to give white definitely the nod here, as uh, black's pieces look terribly uh, coordinated for any type of effective action here. This knight is blocking this bishop here on g5, on g6. And even though the knight is hitting d4, I mean, this one piece hitting d4 is not really doing nothing. But um, positive, he does open up 
this bishop and threaten to capture this pawn, which again is easily parried by c3. F6. Black realizes the gravity of the situation and is trying to break out. Bishop F4. Caruana just simply reinforces his authority in the position. F takes E5. And, um,. Caravana could take with, with the knight or something, but again, with with this big space advantage and having black cramped, um, Barayev would love to just trade this piece right here, which is not doing anything. Therefore, Caravana wisely takes with the pawn because the cramp in the position is still valid. And look at this knight. See, if you took with the knight, then he would trade, and then he would be happy about that. But now, <clears throat> Barre for is forced to think about the prospects of this knight on d7. While the overall cramping influence is still maintained in the entire position. So really, the only move here is like bishop e7 <clears throat> to develop this bishop. And that's what he played, bishop e7, and a g4. Um, g4 is a common move, again, and if you play French advanced variation, look at the game's g4 to uh, kick this knight about. Um, I'm not too impressed about, with g4. Um, it's, a, it's it, like, again, it's a standard move, and one of White's plans in having his wedge here and all the space on the king side is to conduct the king side attack. Uh, in this position, you could White can play on both sides of the board as he dominates the queen side spatially, and he can expand on the king side. The only thing about g4 is that it does quickly facilitate exchange of peace because the knight only can go there. Um, but at the same time, he is pursuing this plan of a, a kingside initiative and just gaining more space. And again, just going back to this bishop, which is quite unremarkable and really hasn't been participating in the game. Okay, so knight h4. Knight d4. Notice how... Caruana avoids the trade the uh, trade of pieces. He takes the outpost away from the knight. Now you have this knight on the rim. That old saying, knight on the rim is dim. Again, what is the knight really doing here? Absolutely nothing. You know, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Right? So the knight is just here. Just kind of out of, out of uh, position. This bishop... It's beautifully placed now, but it's again, it's not, it's not really doing anything, and um, it shows you how important coordination is in chess. You have to be coordinated. You know, just one piece sitting on a diagonal or an open file is not good enough. You have to be able to coordinate the pieces, and there's a severe problem in this um, black position. There's no coordination. The pieces are either out of place completely like these rooks and this knight right here or they're badly coordinated like this bishop just sitting here in a pretty diagonal but you know kind of loitering so oh, the bishop goes back because of course avoiding the trade by coming here there's a threat here so now the bishop is even forced into obscurity. Now bishop g3. Bishop comes back. And again with the theme of the king side attack. Moves like f4. Are definitely on the table. 
and black has to be careful because this knight can end up uh, trapped so Barev strikes out with h4 right excuse me h5 he wants to trade this pawn and open up the file each file for this rook and get some kind of basically free development without even uh, moving this rook uh, the problem is, is his position is is um is pretty suspect, and uh, White kind of holds the cards. If the position opens up, the position will be to White's advantage, just due to the better placement and uh, space advantage, better placement of his pieces overall. But Black is starting to get desperate, and uh, he has to try to do something here. But Instead of lashing out with that move, perhaps just a simple move like castle would have been better. Placing the rook on this semi-open file, and say after f4 and uh, c5 attacking the knight, b takes c5 and knight takes c5, right, with the idea of coming into this square. So therefore knight d2. And rook c8. White is still better, but at least black has some uh, targets here, right? And some prospects of counterplay. So white still has a space advantage. Um, white is going to play f5 here, but at least he has some kind of, um, you know, uh, you know, fight here in the position. So, for instance, after f5, this bishop could come out here to g5. You see, there, there's going to be some kind of uh, uh, banter here between black and white. It's not going to be one-sided. Instead, Barayev chose h5. Caruana just took. And, of course, there's two pieces on the pawn. And two pieces on the pawn. So, right now... This dream of having the open H file cannot be realized at the present. And this knight can't even go back to F5 right now because this knight is here guarding that square also. So, Queen C7 ramping up the pressure on the white center. And of course, black would love to be able to destroy that center. <clears throat> Bishop G4. Again, this pawn is vulnerable, and now we have two pieces attacking that. So, rook h6, again trying to get the rook into play. He can't win this pawn, but perhaps he's hoping maybe he can get on the uh, sixth rank somehow. And he protects. Um, I don't understand Barev's idea with attacking this pawn really because White always has f4 when he any time he wants it. But at the same time, he could be trying to attack uh, e5 and get into c5 events. But his play just seems real awkward and slow. Another idea also with queen c7. Like let me not, you know, make you know this great GM seem like he's not understanding the position because I'm sure he does it's just that he's in a bad position he's trying to make the best out of it the other idea is just to castle on the queen side because he forego his castle <clears throat> he, he's decided to forego his castling rights on the king side so there's f4 just easily parrying in that threat there's c5 right B takes C5, Queen takes C5, and we can say here that Caruana is definitely dominating. He simply moves his king out of the any kind of potential pin or anything like that. Castle Queenside, again, this is um, kind of desperate. <clears throat> I think Black is lost already. Um, and Castle and Queenside, I mean, we had these open files. And this pawn is ready to get sacrificed 
any time to open up the C file. And uh, again, the attacking prospects are all, all here with white. Pieces are terrible, terribly uncoordinated here. Um, the knight, and it just uh, shows Caruana's level that he was able to uh, do this to uh, Barev in the uh, advanced well-known advanced variation, and the guy happens to be a, a well-known Caracan specialist. Knight D2, just finishing, uh, getting, you know, finishing development. Moves like that on the table. Piling up with the rooks. And now he looks to win this pawn and hey, and checkmate. Black checkmate white on the uh, H file. And that's a great dream. And that's uh optimism of chess players. They always feel like they can they can win. Strong move by Caruana and simple move. Just double attacking the, uh, the knight. The knight has nowhere to go. So, there's that move. And the idea, of course, if the idea is real simple, if a bishop takes h4 now, it would be, would be a total blunder because then we have bishop takes d4. And now this piece is attacked three times, only protected once. And then, you know, you have to worry about this pawn behind uh, here. So for instance, you know, bishop g3, and then black is just uh, actually better here. So of course, Caruana wasn't having that. And he let that pawn go, and he took this pawn. And what is interesting is these the rooks lined up on the H file, being blocked by its own pieces. And again, the theme of this game is this coordination. The cramped nature of the position led led to the, the you know the total uncoordination of the black forces. And we see this whole game, this idea of Barev just trying to trying to um, you know, untangle his position and just still ending up, you know, in, uh, it's in a web of confusion. Meanwhile, um, White's position is getting better, better, and better. So now we have these pawns. Now we have a pass pawn on the fifth rank. This knight is pinned. And things are looking gloomy. This pawn can't even be taken by the queen because of simple rook c1. And um, a lot of these Carol Khan type games and positions, like in the French advance, usually if if black, um, you know, black can make it to the end game, usually he has a decent pawn structure. You know, at least if he's down, you know, uh, losing his space advantage race at least if he can get to an end and he has a decent pawn structure and he can draw and sometimes if white is too uh, ambitious he ends up with a superior end game but here uh it looks like it looks horrible for black in the end game if he was to make it to an end game and it looks horrible in the in the middle game so so black has some work to do So, Caruana simply brings, excuse me, not Caruana, Abarev simply brings his bishop back here to e8. You know, again, trying to untangle. And maybe his next move, he probably wants to bring the knight away and have these rooks bearing down on um, h2. Caruana plays f5, which is a fantastic move. Now ask yourself why a move like f5. Not, not only is he advancing this, um, you know, this, these pawns, this pawn majority right here, but it just stops the knight from going back. The knight is in blocking these, these two uh, pieces. So now, the b 
bishop on e7 goes back and now this piece is attacked again so now you have three pieces attacking here rook b1 is also just a decent move just getting on the open open file here. Okay. So this move is good also. G5 again some desperation. Hoping for the and passant and then he can come out with the knight. Of course that's not gonna take place. Carolina simply moves his uh rook back. He moves it to the second rank because he's planning on moving this knight and then he can move, have freedom to move this rook around. And then also it has a, another purpose of adding protection to the second rank if he needs it. <clears throat> Bishop c7, still dreaming and hoping. Not only to win this pawn, but to eliminate this bishop and make these guys uh, relevant one day. Another pawn is attacked. The queen e3. And uh, Caruana is just playing real accurate. I mean... I'm not gonna say accurate, but like real technical here. Like he played, he played this move, which attacks this pawn and protects that pawn. But his position is so overwhelming that he doesn't need, even need that. He could just simply play knight, you know, just attack the queen with knight two b three. You know, at this point, I guess it's just it's just about preference and style. So this gives a glimpse into. Catwan style was he's absolutely just trying to he likes to have everything just locked up. Maybe Nakamura would probably just played a move like that, night night two B three. Just try to blow him out the water. Catwan is absolutely locking up everything and playing in a Carpovian type style. King moves to B eight. And now F six. This real, real crude and primitive, uh, you know, idea. Just moving F7. You see, the bishop is locked up. Again, look at the court, the coordination of the pieces. I mean, black is trying. Black is trying to look organized here, but it's it's very difficult at this point. So F6 was played. Knight F8. Idea is, of course, he's attacking this, but he's trying to give some breathing room to the bishop here. Bishop g4, again, avoiding trades. Avoiding trades because, especially, bad pieces. You don't want to trade bad pieces for your, uh, your good pieces. Let the piece be bad. But besides the idea of that, idea of pushing the pawns also um, comes to mind because black wants to, uh, white wants to queen one of these pawns or both of them if he can and now this further reveals Caruana's mindset when he played uh, queen to e3 earlier is that he understands that once these pawns move that is these bishops might be traded off and then not only is he protecting and supporting the advance of the pawns but he's also able to um, capture with the queen after bishop takes bishop and in this present position it would be with check because now the king is on b8 so now finally finally after many moves, knight hg6 is played again. A little pressure on the pawn. But more importantly, he finally 
we you know is able to uh, get some kind of nominal pressure on the age file and again we see the usefulness of Carolina's previous moves we had the rook on the second rank protected queen here protecting the bishop on g3 and there's basically nothing to do um, for black to stop the beat down and only now does he play knight 2b3 of course attacking the queen queen goes into a passive location and there's f7 and Barayev resigned there's nothing uh, to be done about for instance bishop c6 e6 bishop takes queen takes check everything is protected excuse me everything is protected king 8 king a8 excuse me and then e7 and you say hey wait a minute that would hang upon but the idea is after knight takes e7 then rook e1 because you see the precarious nature of the king the queen has this diagonal on lock and after this knight moves this rook will be able to go all the way to the back rank so just for example um, knight fg6 to protect let's takes rook takes e7 Knight takes e7 and then f8 queen. And then knight c8. Knight c8 would have to be played and then just bishop takes c8. But the idea is if rook takes c8, then rook takes f8. And then just leading to a busted game. Alright. So I know that was kind of quick. But, um,. So this is why after f7, um, Barayev resigned. And an impressive game by Caruana. To me, probably is his best game of the tournament. I mean, he just, uh, like I said, he just steamrolled, he steamrolled Barayev. And I'm really impressed because uh, I've been following Barayev games for many years. And I know that these are, these are his type of positions. These Caracan and French positions and um, I mean just to get steamrolled in 31 moves I mean it says something about the strength and um, um, preparation of uh, Fabiano um, Caruana so I hope you enjoyed that please like and subscribe and I'll continue to uh, do more videos for you all right, comments are welcome. All right, guys, see you later.